How's it going, Ayo? In this video, we're going to talk about Zayn Malik getting exposed in the Call Her Daddy interview, the fact that actors are now joining the WGA strike, and the fact that Logan Paul's energy drink just got banned. All right, so Zayn Malik is the latest celebrity to pour his heart out on the Call Her Daddy podcast, thanks to the amazing interviewing skills of Alex Cooper. In fact, it's the first interview he's done in six years, and it went on for over an hour. Zayn pretty much talked about everything, including some major revelations about his time in One Direction. As we know, he left the band eight years ago, and it's still something that fans are fascinated about to this day. While a reunion seems to be off the cards for now, Zayn has reminisced on his time with the boys and talked about the reason that he decided to leave. He admitted that he quit because he wanted to be the first person to go solo. He said, I completely, selfishly wanted to be the first person to go and make my own record. If I'm being completely honest with you, I'm a passive dude, but when it comes to my music and business, I'm serious about it and I'm competitive. So I wanted to be the first to go and do my own thing. At the time, One Direction had been working non-stop for about five years, creating music and touring almost every day. And Zayn said that by the end of it, they were all sick of each other. Though now he looks back on those days that they spent together in a much fonder light than when he left. When it came time to quitting the band, he said that there was a lot of politics going on within it, which is why he made his decision. He didn't explain it fully, but he said that certain people were doing certain things. Certain people didn't want to sign contracts, so he got the sense that some was happening and he just decided to get ahead of the curve, meaning that he wanted to be the first person to leave if the other members were already thinking about it. What's really interesting though is the way that he describes the aftermath of it all. Zayn said that he took the time to not do interviews as he felt so overexposed to the press while he was in the band. He said that it takes a bit of time for you naturally to progress as a human and give something else that is interesting that you have to say. He also talked about his supposed personality type and the fact that he was dubbed the mysterious one in the group. This he says was was all a marketing scheme. Quote, that wasn't necessarily my personality, I'm just chill. I know that a lot of people have high energy personalities and that's just not the way that I am. So I get it, but I don't think you can define an entire person to one personality trait. We're all a little more complex than that. What he does remember most about his time in the band is the rush of it all. The boys were all thrust into stardom pretty much overnight after going on X Factor and it's fair to say that none of them knew how to handle it to begin with. They rose to fame while they were all in their teens. And Zayn said that he didn't think he was intellectually capable of dealing with fame. It's only now, after he's taken the time to process things with an older mind, that he understands why certain things happened the way they did. But just from the way he was talking about those years, he definitely looks back on them positively. At one point, he described it as fun and amazing, even if he didn't fully understand it at the time. The only thing he didn't touch on in the interview was his alleged fight with Gigi's mother, Yolanda Hadid. Their family dynamic seems to be a lot more stable these days, but it wasn't always like that. Part of the reason that the two of them broke up is because of what happened between Yolanda and Zayn. They apparently got into a physical altercation in September of 2021, and it was reported that he struck her and pushed her into a dresser. He allegedly yelled obscenities at her and said, stay away from my effing daughter. Apparently, he even called up Gigi and told her to strap on some balls and defend him against her mother. As a result of that incident, Zayn was charged with four counts of harassment, for which he pled no contest. He was then placed on a 90 day probation for each count for a total of 360 days. He also had to complete an anger management class and a domestic violence program, as well as having no contact with Yolanda. Eventually, he broke his silence and claimed that the argument started when she showed up to his house uninvited. Clearly, they weren't on good terms at the time, and that tension escalated when she came over unannounced. He might be able to go into more detail about this in the future, but for now, that's all we know. All right, so things are getting very heated with the writer's strike. Last ditch talks between unions and streaming giants broke down just hours before a major deadline. They have simply been unable to reach an agreement over issues around pay residuals and the use of AI. Now, in the biggest development ever, tens of thousands of Hollywood actors are preparing to join the writer's strike. The Screen Actors Guild has decided to support the screenwriters on the picket lines. This is because they also have their own beef with the studios. The union, which represents around 160,000 actors and performers, is seeking a fairer split of streaming profits and a guarantee guarantee that AI will not be used to replace duties performed by actors. Many, many big names have already made it clear that they are willing to strike to support their colleagues. In June, a letter from several A-listers like Meryl Streep and Jennifer Lawrence urged the union not to settle for a mediocre deal. Even Margot Robbie gave her thoughts 
on the strike at the premiere of the Barbie movie. She said, I'm obviously on board and part of the SAG, and I'm definitely in support of all unions, so I hope everyone reaches an agreement that they're happy with. And just yesterday, Hollywood unions representing directors and crews issued a statement of unwavering support and solidarity with the actors. So things have really escalated. Hollywood hasn't seen a double strike of actors and writers since 1960, and it's going to mean that almost all US film and TV productions will grind to a halt. The strike could also extend to the UK and other countries where members of the acting union are active on film sets. This joining of actors and writers would also prevent A-listers from promoting some of the year's biggest movies. This is why the London premiere of Oppenheimer was brought forward by one hour, so that stars like Robert Downey Jr. and Emily Blunt and Matt Damon can all walk the red carpet before any potential walkout happens. Writers have been striking now for several months, outside the studios of major streamers like Disney, Netflix and Paramount. The Guild's president accused streaming companies of refusing to meaningfully engage, claiming that they are stonewalling the Guild. They said, we are not confident that the employers have any intention of bargaining toward an agreement. Meanwhile, the group representing the studios said that it was disappointed by the collapse of negotiations. They released a statement saying, this is the union's choice, not ours. In doing so, it has dismissed our offer of historic pay and residual increases, substantially higher caps on pension and health contributions, audition protections, shortened series option periods, a groundbreaking AI proposal that protects actors' digital likenesses, and more. While this sounds like a good deal, they still have not addressed the writer's main concerns. It's undeniable that they have suffered financially in the age of streaming, partly because shows are having shorter seasons. This transition cut their pay and forced them to work more for less money. According to the WGA, half of TV writers now work at minimum salary levels, compared with only one third in 2013. The union said that they are fighting for writers' economic survival and the stability of their profession. While the budget for TV series has soared over the past decade, the pay for writers and producers has fallen. At the same time, the entertainment industry has paid exorbitant salaries to executives and reported billions in profits. The WGA calculated that industry profits have risen from $5 billion in 2000 to annual profits ranging from $28 billion to $30 billion from 2017 to 2021. And in 2021, 12 of the top media and entertainment executives received about $1 billion in total compensation. So it's really only the writers who are suffering. They just can't support themselves with writing alone, and they have reduced job opportunities from the shift in the industry. There's also another major issue at the bargaining table, AI. The WGA wants safeguards to prevent studios from using AI to generate new scripts. Writers also want to ensure that they are not asked to rewrite draft scripts created by AI, because this would undermine screenwriters and their work by impacting their compensation. The union is open to the use of technology so long as the writers maintain sole credit of the work. They're also contending with declining television ad revenue as traditional TV audiences shrink and advertisers go elsewhere. For their part, the studios released a statement saying, our goal continues to be to reach a fair and reasonable agreement. The AMPTP companies have approached these negotiations with the long-term health and stability of the industry as our priority. We are all partners in charting the future of our business together, and we are fully committed to reaching a mutually beneficial deal. But so far, that hasn't happened, and the situation is getting more dire by the day. All right, now, did you know that Logan Paul and KSI's energy drink has been banned? Well, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency has now issued a recall for Logan Paul and KSI's Prime Energy. The drink is advertised as vegan and having zero sugar, but it contains 200 milligrams of caffeine per can, which is the equivalent of six cans of Coke or two Red Bulls. Apparently, Prime Energy exceeds the acceptable caffeine limit of 180 milligrams per serving. The CFIA said, high levels of caffeine may have adverse effects for children, pregnant individuals, breastfeeding individuals, and those sensitive to caffeine. Exercising while consuming caffeine may lead to adverse health effects. Some of the side effects of consuming excess caffeine may include insomnia, irritability, headaches, and nervousness. To be fair, this decision is not entirely surprising. Some schools in the UK and Australia have already banned the drink. And in the US, Senator Chuck Schumer recently called on the US Food and Drug Administration to investigate prime over health concerns, particularly when it comes to children. According to experts, kids under 12 should not have any caffeine at all, while teens should have no more than 100 milligrams. As for adults, Health Canada recommends that they don't have more than 400 milligrams a day. This is because it can increase the risk of anxiety and stress, poor sleep, and poor appetite. For their part, Logan Paul and KSI have fired back, and they claim that Prime Energy is different from Prime Hydration, because the latter does not contain any 
any caffeine. Meanwhile, they say that Prime Energy is not recommended for anyone under the age of 18. Company officials have also responded to the move in a statement of their own. They said, as a brand, our top priority is consumer safety. So we welcome discussions with the FDA or any other organization regarding suggested industry changes that they feel are necessary in order to protect consumers. But to say that the drink has not been successful would be crazy. It's received so much hype considering the big names behind it, both having a loyal following on social media. It was originally marketed as a sports drink by both Logan and KSI, who have over 40 million YouTube followers between them. KSI recently spoke to Newsbeat and said that the crazy response to Prime has been unbelievable, and that he and Logan honestly didn't expect it. He did admit that they are both very good at marketing though, and said getting out the word hasn't been a problem thanks to their huge profiles. Where they have struggled is getting the drink to people who want to buy it. Supply and demand seems to be a bit of an issue here. When demand is too high but supply is short, that's when scalpers can swoop in and make a profit. KSI has been especially vocal about scalpers and even called them out once in an angry TikTok video. He told Newsbeat that he genuinely hates the resale market and thinks it's taking advantage of people because of the hype. Quote, I hate it. I want everyone to have Prime at a reasonable price and it's not fair. Obviously people are gonna say it's business but I just think it's unfair. While it might have been flying off the shelves at one point in time, now it looks like Prime has a lot more to worry about than just sales. So let me know what you guys think about this story and I'll catch you in the next video.